Okay, this is the last video for week three. Uh, this ends sprint one. Um, I took in some of the comments for students, some of the ideas that they were trying to execute on. I didn't put them all in because some of them got a little bit um, further than I wanted to go. I'll work on those ideas in the coming sprint. So, um, I put up a link for a series of uh, user interface tutorials from Unity. So that's up on the Moodle page. I'm going to just move it over briefly. So here, we're on the last week here. We're, we're covering pretty focused on um, user interfaces, which this video will be on. And um, here's the live lecture. You should have access. Here's online lecture one. If you click on it, it'll bring you to Unity, and I want you to go to these 11. Basically, just explain uh, how user interfaces work in Unity, canvases, direct transform buttons, images, text sliders. And I'm going to go through them now in my project. But if you go through these videos, at least you have some, like, intro experience with them, you know, mess around with them as you're doing the video. So this is where my project got to. It's a little bit different um, than the um, than the um, demo video. So there's a little bit of more features. Somebody wanted like an image in the background, like, oh, I'm actually painting on a canvas. So I went ahead and did that. Um, but let me just move around the screen. So notice how the mouse position is now updating all the time, regardless if I'm clicking or spawning. That's going to be a little different. Uh, my, you know, the, my information here of my project, that's the same. This drop down here of spawning stuff, that's the same. Uh, the way that it's spawning is the same. You notice I can delete stuff now. So they spawn stuff, I can just go in here and I'm deleting. That's new. Um, and let's see what else is. Notice how I can, um, I can click and change the colors. That's that's the same. Um, but now I have I could do a time destroy or destroy all. So if I paint, I can I left click. I'm erasing some of it, and then it's still doing a time destroy after a while. So I can paint and click destroy all. That's new. Um, and if I turn off time destroy and paint, it does not get destroyed and you keep painting to your heart's content whatever this thing is that you're uh, making right change colors what have you and you can left click i'm right clicking to paint or create and left clicking to destroy or erase and i can just click destroy all if i want to get rid of everything the only last thing I'm going to make a comment on is notice up here in the inspector, or the, uh, I should say the hierarchy, a bunch of objects are not being created. Um, they're actually, I'm placing them all underneath my actual clip detector. And so I'm spawning cubes, spheres, whatever, it doesn't matter. And for you, you know, you can just have a listing of um, your prefabs and you can switch between them. Or if you can just do on these uh, primitives, just like these that I'm using, that's fine as well. Long story short, they're all being spawned underneath or as a child of my clip detector, and when I click destroy all, they get destroyed or erased. So this is where I got to. Um, for your project, you know, you just have to get to my demo project that was posted up. Since that was what I showed at the beginning of the sprint, that is to the most, um, the, or I should say that is what the min spec of your project should be. Obviously, some of you have already deviated and doing your own things, and that's where I got this list of a few new features. And these are what I'm going to be going over as I go over the interface. All right, so now that I showed you how my app is working, I'm going to open up the file, and this is my script that I'm using at this point, at this stage. So I'm going to go through it one by one. It is um, a little bit different than where the script was left off in the live lecture, the video before this, for this week. So uh, I'm just going to go through it and uh, explain what was changed, what was added, what was modified. And um, again, since you're just working along with me, you can just rewrite your script. The name of the file is different and the name of the class. I'm noticing that you know a few students are, are doing that thing where the class name is different than the file name. So whatever the file name is, that's the name of my class. 
And if I go back to Unity, you can see here, this is the one I'm using. It's turned on. It's the only script that's on my click detector. Um, do not put this script on objects that are living, are like spheres that are living in your scene, or spheres that you're generating your prefabs. This script is meant to exist once. It's meant to exist always. And that's why I place it onto this manager object. And it helps me organize my thinking. I say, oh, okay, I can look at my hierarchy. This object is responsible for my click detection. I know I can click on it, and everything I have to deal with clicking and uh, user input or whatever the name is I call this is right here. So um, uh, the only thing that's new up here that I should make you aware of is that I'm using UniEngine.py. So I'm using a new library, new namespace, a new using command. And this is how I'm going to interact with my user interface. Um, it's actually only needed, just so you're aware, for this text as I'm updating this text in my interface. All the others are kind of using the interface. Um, as I'm going to show you, I went over briefly in class, I like connected part of my script um, to these, um, if I click on one of these interfaces, like the slider here, this on value change. And I just added stuff and I said, oh, okay, this is the object that has my script on it. This is the script I want to run when you interact with the slider. If you're just doing that kind of stuff, you do not need this. But for here, where I'm updating text, it gets a little bit more complicated. Just know that I am using a new library. And if you try to do what I'm doing and you forget to put this in, you'll get an error, something like, wait a minute, I don't know what this is. Did you mean to use this namespace? UniEngine.ui, it'll give you a little hint. And you're like, oh, wait, okay, I should be using Anyway, I have a bunch of variables. Most of them are private, as discussed. Um, the only thing is public, which is this mouse position. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually going to stop the video here, and then I'm going to pick up the user interface in the next video.